I am here and this wonderful weekend of Christmas with a wonderful, fantastic young lady named Diane Dixon. I find her so very fascinating that I wanted to come and just have a conversation right before the holidays. Hi, Diane. How are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. This is an honor. This is really an honor. I'm here with a young lady that father was the first African American police officer mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. That's something to be very proud of. Mm -hmm. And now my trailblazer is sitting right here. Tell us a little bit about Diane. Well, first of all, you always got to give honor to the Most High because without him, you and I and the people who were behind the cameras wouldn't be here. Uh, but um, I take no credit for anything, again, uh, about Diane. It's a gift that God gave me at the age of 50. I'm not ashamed to tell my age because I am a beautiful 57 black female. Yes, you are. And uh, this talent that was uh, put before me was quite a surprise. They say when you turn 50, uh, you live. So therefore, I, I see that I'm living now. Mm -hmm. But uh, about Diane, um, this gift God gave me was an actor, and an actress, a comedian, and I can sing. And so um, in early 1999, I lost my mother, who was my best friend. Uh, I went homeless for three years and um, got on drugs, uh, sold drugs wanted to commit suicide, the whole nine yards, I had no direction. Uh, and being out there in the wilderness, um, a prophecy came to me uh, saying that I would uh, sit among some of the richest people and my life would change. Uh, and of course, when you're homeless, you can't see the forest for the trees. Uh, and, uh, but yet and still, I knew God and I received the prophecy. Uh, but I kept wondering when. Never had an idea that it would be this. And uh, in 19, um, well, it was 2000, 2005, I was riding down the street and they were doing this uh, movie called The Gospel with all these wonderful uh, actors like um, Yolanda Adams, uh, Hezekiah Walker, all of these gospel singers was in this movie. And I ran up on the set and said, you guys need some extras. And they ran me out of the set and they said, come back. And because of my faithfulness and because of uh, wanting to continue to do acting, I came back as an extra and the floodgates of my life opened up from there. Uh, I was going to every movie set that I could go to as an extra, learning everything I could, uh, through meeting people, uh, from wardrobe to lighting to camera, and I excelled all the way to where people were beginning to uh, take to me and resumes were being done for me. I only had two things on my resume. <laughs> and please tell us, what two things were they? I want to know. I really do. It, uh, the first movie called My Sophie that I'll never forget, <laughs> and the story behind My Sophie was I did the audition. And the young lady said that she wanted me to play the mom, but she also wanted me to play the lead and the supporting actress because I nailed it. And that was my first time ever doing an audition because I was always thinking I was just supposed to be an extra. I knew nothing about the business. And I had uh, another independent movie called Eyes on the Young. And uh, then resumes were being done for me. Headshots were being paid for me. And things just start happening for me. And then God just start uh, placing known celebrities, uh, music artists like Ann Nesby from The Sound of Blackness, uh, Obama Tunde, who's now a personal friend, Ed Hardwell. And they became personal friends of mine through the years. And that's how it all unfolds. So now my life is an actress, you know. <laughs> and with that, I've done some directing are producing, uh, teach some acting. Uh, people learn things from me. I've made some magazines. I've made some newspapers. I've been with uh, 
a movie star by the name of Dick Greg Allen, who we did this movie called Grapes on the Vine. I think we got a taste somewhere here. And that's what my life is all about, is being an actress and being the best that I can and taking this gift that God gave me and run with it. Wow, that is so fascinating. Now, 50 plus, mm -hmm. what's next for Diane Dixon? 50 plus, that is such beautiful. I'm looking forward to that, by the way. Wow. <laughs> well, of course, getting into this business, I was really threatened by the real beautiful dainty women at the time. But I thought, wait a minute, they need somebody who needs to advertise Bengay. There's somebody's <laughs> mom. There's somebody that's got to do the diabetic shoes. So I took, again, this thing and ran with it. So now in 2013, there is a play that's going to be a one-woman show uh, called The uh, Real Cougars of Atlanta. And uh, I look forward to doing that in 2013, along with Ed Hartwell as my young protege, if mm -hmm. I can say that. Good. Yeah. And uh, there's some other things that's on the table in 2013 that I can't talk about right now. But my main focus is going across the stage, doing what Monique did, and receiving my Oscar. Because I got an opportunity to become friends with Monique. And when she received that Oscar, she handed it to me and told me I was next. So I received that as well as the prophecy back then to get my Oscar. Uncle Roy, wow. I am so impressed with this. Oh my goodness. You're so versatile. Tell us a little bit about Uncle Roy. Well, last year I played uh, Uncle Roy, which was a man. <laughs> and, of course, you could see that the audience would have never guessed it was me no. because everybody that came out had no clue because I was a uh, older woman and then going back to the stage and getting, as I call it, my drag, <laughs> and they disguised me totally. Uh, Uncle Roy was a drunk in the play, and he was drinking with one of his uh, nieces, and they told a family secret. So the name of the play was called Untold Secrets, and Uncle Roy was drinking his eggnog, and he told the secret along with his niece. He was getting his Christmas on. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting it on. And, of course, they had to ask Uncle Roy to leave. <laughs> like most of our uncles. All drunk. Right. right. <laughs> I am here today with a wonderful woman named Diane Dixon that's getting ready to have her Oscar, and I want to be there. So I can have my first interview. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sitting here for you to do that. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Diane. Mm -hmm. I really and truly appreciate you taking time out with me today and giving me this wonderful, outstanding interview. And I wish you many, many blessings. Thank you so much. And I look forward to working with you and many blessings to you and all the great things that God has uh, blessed you with and uh, your product and your networking uh, is going to blow off the chain. Mm -hmm. You know that. So thank you for having me. You're so welcome. And I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. To everybody out there, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I am a real lead driver. Stay tuned. Times are changing, moving fast. There's a sign up ahead. Detour, follow the path. If you find that so low where you need to take the higher detour. Detour, follow Maria Lee Driver. spring I have my own um, talk show in Philadelphia it's going to be aired on Bounce TV and WCMN uh, the Cherry Hill Network they picked me up we're doing a show on detours which is by entrepreneurs the beginning of the business the middle of the business and the success of the business oh yes I, listen that's why I'm here I know about the beginning and the middle get to the middle okay well, that is outstanding. Then you know what? You'd be someone I would like to have on my talk show. Awesome. I'd love to be on talk show. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes, we will.